In this presentation, we're going to upload bank transactions for our second month of operations so we can continue on with our practice problem. Uploading the transactions will be much the same as the first month, but as we go through the second month of transactions, it should be a little bit easier because we've memorized some transactions. We have some transactions that are in the system, so it will be a little bit easier for us to reconcile. So we want to see what those changes will be as we enter the second month of data. And if we set up bank rules, then that should make it easier as well for the system to pick up that information and make more of the financial statements kind of automatically for, for, for us from the bank feeds that we will be setting up and inputting into the Zero accounting system. Here we go with Zero. Here we are in our, our Triple G Company dashboard. We're going to be going on over to the accounting tab. We're going to go down to our bank accounts. Now we are imagining we have our bank feeds set up. If we had our bank feeds set up directly, then the information would be coming directly from the bank into our system. We would take that information and then obviously create the financial statements from it or match out that information as it feeds into our system with what we enter into the field. That would have us entering or setting up the bank feeds. We talked about that in a prior presentation. The other way we could do this is of course, take that information, download it from the bank and upload that, that information, which will give us or get us to that same basic spot where we will have the information from the bank in the system, which we will then use to, to take out of what I would call like a limbo where we have it, it's not reconciled or it's not added to our financials yet, and then add them and use them to create our financial statements. That's what we're gonna do in our practice problem. So we're gonna go over and we're gonna add the second month of basically data to this practice problem. We'll go through the second month and as we do so, we'll kind of see what the second month looks like as we're entering uh, similar data, but for the second month of operations. Then later on, we'll get into kind of more complex data that we might input and think about different kind of bank rules we can set up as well as look at credit card data. So what we're gonna add this time is going to be this information. So this is gonna be the second month of operations. If we were to consider it in terms of a bank statement, it would look something like this. So we have a bank statement for April now, beginning balance is gonna match what was the ending balance of last period that we input last time, which was March. And then we have our additions and our deductions. To upload this into zero, we need this in just a transaction type detail. If we were to download a uh, item from the bank, we could do so in multiple types of formats, like a, a QBO type of file, QuickBooks type of file, or you can have kind of a basic spreadsheet type file, which you can open in Excel, which is called a CSV file. So that's what we have here. We have provided you with this CSV file for the month of uh, March, uh, April, so for the month of April, and then you could take this information and import it into the system. Now, if you go to the file tab in Excel and you wanted to create a CSV file that you can import, you can say uh, browse and then save as, and then you're just gonna change the extension. So you have the extension here, which is a CSV, as opposed to an Excel, which is a .xlsx file. So that's how you can kind of create the data you want. Uh, when you download this data from the bank, it's usually pretty basic. We just have the, the date, the amount, and then the description. That's usually what we're going to take, and, and that's what we're creating our financial statements with. we got to take that information and basically use it to create our financial statements with. So if you download this information from a bank, it'll typically have these three line items, and that's, that's in essence what you're constructing the financials with. I'm going to close this back out, and then we're going to upload this. I'll, I'll save it. And then to go into the transaction, we're in this checking account for Chase. I'm going to go to the manage account dropdown, and then we're going to go into the import a statement. We're going to be importing a statement. Same screen we had for the last month we did this within. So we have uh, in a new window, go to your bank site, download your bank statement, and then upload the bank statement here. These are the file types that you're able to upload. We're going to be working with a CSV, which is in essence a spreadsheet, simplified spreadsheet program, kind of like Excel without all the formatting detail. So that the format and all the cool stuff that Excel can do all that kind of formatting detail will not mess up <laughs> the upload projects. So that's why they kind of stripped that away. So it's just a basic spreadsheet. So we're going to go to browse then and, and find our file. So browse. Now I'm in our course data file. So you should have access to this course data file if you're in the course. And then we have uh, the bank data. We want the upload for April. So make sure you're picking up the April information. So I'm going to double click on that. Notice it looks kind of like an Excel file, but it has a CSV extension. So here it is. And again, you see the .csv, that means it's a CSV extension, which is going to be compatible 
with a file type that we can import. Then we're going to go ahead and import that information. So here's what we have. So we're going to match up the line items, basically the headers. So we got the transaction date, the payee, the notes. So here's kind of like an example, as we saw last time, if we were to match it up down here, we have the transaction date that's going to match up to our header for the transaction date. So if I was to look at the headers here in the CSV file, it's, it's basically just saying, Hey, is that transaction date lining up to what we want here? Yeah, there's the transaction date It's going to the transaction date. Then we have the amount and that's tying out to the transaction amount as we can see here. So that's going to be the, the amount on our sprint spreadsheet is tying out to their name. Uh, transaction amount and then the description ties out to the description that's generally all you r really have when you get to download the bank feed information but you can have other fields within zero which means you can actually kind of uh, take this data and and possibly do more to it right you can actually add more information here before you upload which might be faster so if you wanted to to upload information and and add more detail before you take it from here and upload it to zero because then you can then you can manipulate the information in a spreadsheet type format which might be a little bit quicker before you put it into the database program you can consider that so other fields that we don't have included here the payee field not included here you could go through and and say hey you know let me add a payee field and basically populate that information before i import it you could think about that it might be a little faster to do in excel uh the reference the transaction type so you can you can put the transaction type in there the check number the account code uh, the tax type and the analysis code so those are all added fields that uh, you could consider but like i say when you usually get the transactions from the bank if you just look at the bank fee transactions you'll have in essence these three these three columns that were are the basic information you'll be dealing with so let's upload this then so we're going to say uh, save we have 17 lines were imported zero zero of them were duplicates so we don't have duplicate information that's great we're going to then say okay upload that information so here we have it it bounces us over to that reconcile tab so now it took that information from in essence the bank and it takes us to the reconcile tab where we have the bank information on the left this is the bank information this is our information on the right now remember we're we're doing all of our information on this from the bank that's kind of like our starting our launching point and, and therefore, we don't really have anything on the right that's going to be matching out because we're dependent on the bank. We're going to be creating our books from the bank. So like we did before, we're going to match this stuff out. Now, notice we have a little bit more detail here. Like this one says, you know, this one is trying to match out for us and it's creating this for us. How? Because it's basically looking at last time and think, hey, look, this is what we did last time. Is this right? This one's not, <laughs> you know, so well, it's not right here, but it could be sometimes it, it gets this right sometimes. All right. If I went back down here, uh, same thing It's trying to pick. It's trying to pick this one up from a transaction last time. And uh, same thing with that one. So and then if I go to the next, let's take a look at the next transactions and continue on see if they matched anything else up here's another one that they got right right here's edison and they're going to match this one out now this one note they matched out not by just guessing which it could have probably would have guessed anyways but this one we told it that's edison with a rule so we set up this one it's applying the rule called edison to tie this one out so that one should be right because we kind of made a rule to do it this one's a draw you'll recall and this one we didn't set up a rule but it's guessing that it should go there because that's what we did last time we had we had that draw and so it's still even though it's not a rule it's still kind of trying to help us out which can be really beneficial the bank feed it's going to pick that one up as well so notice even if you don't set up the bank rules it should be a lot easier to do the second month of operations because typically most people have expenses the expense items will be very similar and even if we don't know how to set up rules or don't do rules it'll give us these suggestions. Now, if, if you want suggestions off, you can say, uh, turn, turn off the suggestions here. And then all those uh, suggestions will be removed, right? But and, except for the one that that was a rule. So this might be a nice format if you are, you know, you, you want to tell someone else, if you're using this with someone else and say, Hey, look, I don't want someone just clicking off. Okay, 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 on some of the suggestions, because as we've seen, they're not always right. If you're, if you're saying, hey, look, if it's, if it's something I want to repeat, I will set up a rule for it. And therefore, the rule will then remain. The rules remain. Suggestions do not. And that might be a way to go uh, if you're working with someone else and having someone else kind of help you out. And you're saying, hey, look, don't rely on the suggestions. If you think the suggestions are right, make a rule for it 
so that you're consciously doing that and then and not just passively clicking off anything that says okay and that might be a good a good policy to to work with but uh, if you have the suggestions on like we will have here then we can go through those suggestions and we can think about should we make a rule for it or not and especially for the first couple months of operations that could be really useful because every suggestion that comes up is a potential opportunity for us to then say is this a rule that i can make somehow universal uh, can i make rules more stringent if i need to if the rule's not working here and then we can and then we can get into to the more specific rules from that point forward now if we go back up top this is going to be on the bank statement transactions so now we have the bank statement transactions more transactions have been included here we reconciled everything for the prior month everything for the current month not reconciled and then if we go to the trend to the account transactions this is going to be our book side of things we don't have the new transactions all this stuff was for march we have nothing for april because we're going to be constructing april's book transactions from the bank and we haven't approved anything yet to do so therefore nothing has been input into our financial statements as of yet we will be constructing that as we go in future presentations as we take these 17 items and make the account or book transactions from them. That's it for now. Let's get out of here.